Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Triangulation is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Triangulation, episode 86, recorded January 9th, 2013. The Black Blood of the Earth. Triangulation is brought to you by Pond5, the world's stock media marketplace. If you're a media maker looking for video, photos, illustrations, music, sound effects, after effects, templates, or 3D models, check out Pond5. And for an exclusive 50 free stock media files, go to pond5.com slash triangulation. It's time for Triangulation, the show where I get to talk to some of the most interesting uh, people in the world. And we've got a great guest for you, especially if you like coffee or beer or r nuclear radiation. <laughs> His name is Philip Broughton. 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 Did you bring it? It's been Broughton. I, it's been Broughton. Philip Broughton. And I'll tell you the great story of how I first found out about Philip Broughton, who is the hair director at Funranium Labs among other things. Uh, we were doing a Mac Break Weekly. Rich Siegel was on, the mm -hmm. uh, developer who wrote uh, Bare Bones Software's um, BB Edit, a great uh, text editor for the Macintosh used for many of us by, for years. Uh, Rich is a great guy who loves many things, including parrots, fine wristwatches, and coffee. Mm -hmm. And we do a pick on Mac Break Weekly, and his pick was something he called the black blood of the earth. He held up an empty bottle because he was done. <laughs> a vial like this, but with nothing in it. And it, and it looks kind of medical, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he says, I love these. Now, we've talked about coffee before uh, because uh, Rich is also a fan of the very sweet coffee syrups that are big in Rhode Island. Mm, yep, Eclipse. he sent me a bottle. <laughs> yeah, kind of weird stuff. It's the state drink. Of it Rhode is, Island. and I grew up in Providence, so I knew about Eclipse mm -hmm. and the uh, and the other one. In fact, I have some bottles in the back, uh, but I don't drink that stuff anymore. I'm a grown up now, and I drink <laughs> I drink coffee. So I immediately ordered some Black Blood of the Earth, and while I was there, I saw these great steins that you make, uh, and I ordered one of those. Well, I went frankly kind of crazy, and you say I bumped you ahead in the line, Philip. Broughton, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And uh, since I'm here um, and it's Should the afternoon, one? yes, I'd, I'd love one. Now, wait, wait, but before you open it up, we've got to look at the label here. This wow. is this says X. This is Guatemala Nueva Venus. Venus. So these are. This is coffee. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You can you can sample some. I'll hold up the All another right. another vial of this. Uh, but it's not your. It's not just normal brew. No, this is a cold vacuum extraction of a single <laughs> geographic varietal. Um, okay, there's so much to talk oh, about. Oh, would you like one, too? I would, actually. Do you have an extra uh, uh, stein of science? Uh, no, I, you didn't I'll bring put yours, my, but I'll uh, have to I didn't bring you. mine. I forgot. I shot. I should have brought mine. So I'll talk about the steins of science, too. Now, you, you, now I did not put too much water in mine. I actually mixed mine with milk. Is that, is that her her heresy? However you like to do it is how you like to do it. <laughs> so you're going to get Peru Salcanti, Here, not Salty you. Carney. Not like, Salty Carney, but... Like the people down at St. George call it. <laughs> now, uh, you actually have warnings on your website about how much of this in a day to consume. Yes, I generally recommend you stay under 100 mils per day. Um, and how much is this? That's 50. Okay, so I could have two of these a day. How much you caffeine is there? You can have two of those. I don't necessarily recommend starting there. You'd want to work your way up over a period of months getting used to it. <clears throat> Tolerances. Tolerance, are very important. yeah. And you mixed it with how much water in here? That's about three parts. So you got 150 mils of water there. Luckily, uh, your handy staffers were kind enough to provide me with a volumetric flask with which to do quick measurements. How did we happen to have that? We, so, we've got, we have a very interesting place. You have, a, here. You have a fully stocked uh, <laughs> technical <laughs> section. Glassware is very good here. Um, okay, so how did this, how did you get into this? Were you a coffee nerd? No, actually. It took me until going to Italy at age 28 before I found coffee. Great I coffee. Could drink and be happy with. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I actually was drinking somewhere in the neighborhood of six pack to a 12 pack of Coke a day Oof. to get me the caffeine hit right. that I right. needed to keep right. going. Uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, 
that led to a diabetes diagnosis. Oh, not good. In uh, 2009, in yeah. June. I had been living in Livermore at that point and commuting into work at UC Berkeley. You're a, you're a physicist. A uh, health physicist. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk about that in a mm. second. But meanwhile, you might want to think about what that could be. And then we'll, we'll let you know. <laughs> if it's meaningful to you, I'm impressed. With no Google searches. No, no. Google searches allowed yet. Uh, uh, I've this, been, by the way, this is fantastic. Oh, thank you. Just delicious, yeah. I've been living in Livermore and was commuting in to Berkeley. And that's 45 minutes with traffic. And I was getting in at dead o'clock in the morning. My job involves wrangling the X-ray radiation producing machine safety at campus for UC Berkeley and all the radiation detection instrumentation are my purview. So really it was a life or death matter that I be awake. <laughs> Alertness is key. <laughs> Unfortunately, I needed a heck of a lot of cream and sugar to actually be able to drink the coffee that was around my office. Right. As a matter of uh, health mindedness, I'd actually started transitioning away from soda to coffee that contained more sugar than the soda I had been drinking. Not good. So I didn't really do myself any favors Not there. Not good, yeah. When I got the diagnosis, the diabetes, it was a, okay, crash course. Right. I gotta fix this now. You, you gotta learn how to drink black coffee. And that's not easy for someone who has a vicious sweet tooth. Right. Especially if you've grown up on Eclipse, you kind of know. <laughs> yeah, nothing sweeter. <laughs> I drink it straight out of the bottle. <laughs> oh, might as well be chugging Mrs. Butterworth's. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Dave's, however, Dave's that Rich Siegel was, uh, was talking have, about a while ago, that was also delicious. I, I have both. Can you bring us some coffee syrup? No, no, we don't want to no, mix. No, don't want to no, mix. No, don't double up. No, double up. That'd be that'd be bad. So uh, you need you need to solve this problem. You need the caffeine. Yep. But you don't need the sweets. But I and I need to find something I could drink without tearing my tongue out. Well, and that's something that that one of the reasons I put a lot of cream and sugar in my coffee is it's bitter. Yes. So where where this all started was in 2008. An acquaintance was working for a game company over in Japan, and he went on an onsen tour. So he went up into the mountains to all of the spas and hot springs that are mm, out there. Wonderful. As he was wandering around town, he stopped dead in his tracks. He went, that's beautiful. <laughs> As he beheld beautiful glassware in a triple-tiered uh, drip, cold drip system, uh, room temperature drip system, uh, that they were doing a 16-hour process coffee through three columns of coffee and they served him what the end result of what they called <clears throat> their Viennese cold extraction and he said he could felt uh, he could felt himself vibrating through walls <laughs> and I looked at the picture and I read his story and then I looked over at the shelves of my glass collection because mm. before Funranium Labs came into existence my home was known as the Philip Rotten home for wayward and virgin laboratory glassware you collect this stuff. Yeah. I. It's beautiful. That's I, why we have some flasks here. It's really that's beautiful. That's exactly why. It, yeah. Actually, I had, when I brought my fiance over for the first time for dinner, she walked into my kitchen and stopped dead and said, I can't eat here. <laughs> why? She's a chemist. Oh. And has the chemistry training for thou shalt not eat or drink <laughs> in a laboratory. And my kitchen looked like one. Yeah. I said, yeah. no, no, it's, it's fine. <laughs> None of this has been used for chemistry at all. It's strictly food. And four or five more times later, she actually agreed to <laughs> let me make her food. Uh, so you're working on perfecting coffee making. Well. Essentially. Making it acceptable to me. Yeah. Uh, when I looked at his, that, that setup, and I looked at my collection, I said, I could probably build that. Hmm. Heck, I could probably build three of those. <laughs> I, I, I was asked if I could bring my extraction rig with me and... The answer is no for two reasons. One, process is the key for how to make it. And that's, that's the secret formula that makes what I do special. Second is uh, it wouldn't fit on your set. <laughs> yeah. Now, I bought, after hearing about this, I got intrigued by the idea of cold brew, and I bought a Yama uh, cold brew uh, drip tower, mm -hmm. which I imagine is something like, I have it up here if you want to uh, show it on the screen. It's something like, can you see my computer? Yeah. There it is. Something, I have That's that. That's very similar to yeah. what my friend found That's what up I at figured. the onsen. And you'd fill the top part there with ice water, actually put ice in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you adjust, you titrate that little 
knob there, so it's about a drip a second. It's very slow. Roughly, yep. And there's coffee in that second middle part there uh, with a, with a uh, disc, a ceramic uh, filter disc yep. at the bottom of it. There's a completely superfluous, as far as I could tell, spiral. It makes it very pretty. <laughs> but it's awfully hard to clean. Yeah, and it's I, I, so hard to I clean. I can't think of it having any particular value, but it's, it looks good. And then it drips down into the decanter, and it does. It takes a day. Uh, to brew maybe 12, 16 ounces of, of uh, coffee. And then if you're doing what they were doing at that onsen, you then take the resultant liquor that you had just made and pour it over the second pass. No. And then you do it again for a third no. time. No. That, that's what my friend came across in Japan. No wonder he was vibrating. It also was a pretty penny because yeah. that's, that's a lot of coffee time. and a lot yeah. of time to go through. So I know you don't want to reveal the secret to the black blood of the earth. But I can talk in some generalities. Well, do you talk in some generalities? Is that so? It's cold brewed, which means boiling or even hot water doesn't hit it at any point, right? That's correct. Yeah, room temperature or ice water? As close to freezing as I can get. Really? Okay. For the duration of the process. Okay. I learned a lot of interesting things in the course of the eighteen months of experimentation before I let anyone else taste any of this. Yeah. Part of it was shelf life. Was learning how long this lasted once I made it. Right. I generally quote it'll last three months refrigerated some people told me yeah it was fine after seven i stick with three months just okay. conservative and refrigeration yes yeah. got to keep it cold yeah <clears throat> uh other interesting things i discovered while it's not bitter it's not it's not sweet either you combine it with straight vodka <laughs> coffee's not sweet straight vodka's not sweet together it turns into kalua Really? Well, in terms of You don't mention this in the Funranium manual anywhere, do you? I missed that part. You have to keep digging. <laughs> there, there's some handy cocktail recipes Is that in, in there. the FAQ? <laughs> uh, straight vodka. Straight, straight? Not street vodka. Straight, straight vodka. Straight vodka. Wow, interesting. I'll have to try that. This has so, substituted all the Kahlua out of the cocktails I make at home. This sounds really good. A chance to have less sugar in my right. drinks. It tastes good. So now, so there's no bitterness... Mm -hmm. um, and there, it doesn't stain your teeth. No acid to etch into the enamel. Right. Um, and it doesn't upset your stomach. That actually was the... I made a friend on campus uh, who had had his stomach basically torn apart by his advisor's pot of army death coffee, <laughs> which, as far as he could tell, was made of hydrochloric acid and Folgers. It, <laughs> it left him with a, pharma a pharmacy full of antacids. Yeah. Which and he's I know gotten I, to stop using. As I get older, I do notice that I get an acid stomach if I, dr if I drink regular coffee. But, I like, you know, unfortunately, I like, kind of like that bite in the coffee, too. Something that you have to decide whether you have to You have to, to have acclimate that. to. Right, right. Uh, but what I do get from this is you really get to taste the flavor of the coffee. It, I could see from a connoisseur's point of view, and I could see why you use single beans, you really are getting a taste of the coffee that you don't get otherwise. And it's... So my, the early, the first thing I set out to do was doing single geographic varietals, if I could, for, I want to taste Colombia right. today. Yeah. I want to taste Kenya. Right. Actually, one of the more interesting experiments I did was a uh, longitudinal experiment up and down the East African Rift Valley. Just worked my way oh, north fun. from Uganda and went to the top and found that, depending upon how far you, up you went in the Rift Valley which also is how old the volcanism is, is how chocolatey or how greasy the coffee tasted. In Uganda, it was a dry, dark, baking chocolate. Delicious. Uh, once you hit Ethiopia, it's hot buttered popcorn. Huh. It's, it's greasy. It's savory. Huh. Interesting. There's, there's still a hint of chocolate, but it's mostly butter. Now, and that's because of the uh, soil chemistry, you think? Soil chemistry changes as the volcanism gets right. older. Right. Uh, among many things that I am is a frustrated volcanologist. Oh, that's neat. I, I, when I was at UC Santa Cruz, I was a double major of physics, earth sciences, ran out of cash, took my physics degree and ran, but I never stopped loving volcanoes. That's neat. Well, my dad was a professor of earth sciences at UCSC for many years, so yeah. we have something in common. I am familiar with your yeah, dad. Yeah, same name. <laughs> so... Um, so now, okay, now there are, I have some questions. Now, I, okay. know, I know a little bit about the chemistry of coffee making, just a little bit, and I've talked to people like Mark Prince, the coffee geek at coffeegeek.com and stuff. Mark is awesome. And he's wonderful. <laughs> he's and he, 
I've learned a lot that I ended up putting into my own work. He's brilliant. This stuff. He's brilliant. But one of the things that coffee connoisseurs often say is that, you know, creating a cup of coffee is really a question of extracting a variety of different qualities from the beans. Yes. And it's, it's, a, it's acidity, partly. It's partly uh, kind of a, uh, a tanniny, kind of a puckery kind of a flavor. It's, a, it's flavor itself. It's the oils. There's a variety of things we're getting out of the yep. beans, some of which you leave behind because you're not using hot water. Right. Uh, what are you losing? How do you, for instance, with ice cold water, don't the oils just stay in the in the in the grind? So when you, whenever you do a temperature variation, you have your big three controls you can do for coffee, which is temperature, grind level, right, time, time. right. If you're going, it, it and as you know from looking at any three point graph, uh, it's non trivial varying in where you move in that triple point diagram. Uh, a lot of people who really like a finely extracted espresso, they're not all that fond of Black Blood Earth because it's missing the bite that it they is. really are looking for yeah. from a high temperature, high pressure extraction right. of very finely ground coffee. Right. Moving to very low temperature, the cost I have to do is very long times of extraction. Hence the slow process. The shortest duration extraction I do is 48 hours. Okay, that's much longer than I was doing with this Yama. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the other reason why production is limited somewhere around 12 liters per day. <laughs> How many? I got it. Can you, now again, I know it's top secret, but can you, are there pictures of your setup? Probably not, right? There's pictures of the earlier iterations of Oh, you don't want anybody to know how you're doing this. Uh, iteration one is not much more than a a tinkering on the toddy technique. I have a toddy as well. Now, a toddy is a bit is plastic. It's cheap. It's a very it the is. cheapest way to get into uh, cold brewed coffee is a toddy. It's about thirty dollars. Yep. It's nothing more really uh, than a than a pitcher with a handle, a pitcher and a hole. And a, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, and 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 a filter. Uh, also, again, one of these. Uh, well, the really nice ones have with the filter. The other ones tell you just to pour it through whatever filter you have on yeah, hand. No, the, yeah, no. So I I got some sort of like plasticky, fibery filter, but I imagine that that makes a difference too. And it, mm -hmm. it's the same thing, which is you put a plug in the hole, you let the coffee sit all day, and then you pull the plug and it drips out. And it's never, it's always been cold. It's never been hot. And they basically want you to run it with cowboy coffee as well. So coffee beans you've stomped with your boot. They so want the, the, the coarse coarsest grind. of grinds. Yeah, yeah. Because they want to make sure water can permeate through all yeah, the Yeah, otherwise grind. it gets stuffed up. And because as far as that technique is concerned, a espresso grind is cement. Right. So, <laughs> that's, why oh, need, yeah. that's why you need the pressure on the right. espresso rig to actually get it through well, and, the grind. And I, and I you know, I... It, Thanks to Mark Prince, spent a lot of money on an espresso machine and a, and a fancy uh, Vario, you know, Barazzo Vario grinder that I can get, you know, f infinitesimal differences in the. And you can easily make a grind that you know, even a 180 bar machine can't possibly push water <laughs> through. So it is, it, there, it, it's fun to play with these parameters, these three mm -hmm. parameters time, uh, pressure, and grind, and, but, he, and temperature. But then you start discovering other ones. There's more. Uh, so you use the word vacuum. I do. Yes. <laughs> I'm I have an awful lot of scientific gear at my disposal <laughs> with which to work. So I can pull some fairly tight vacuums to really thoroughly extract on my coffee. By the time I'm done, the grinds are as dry as when I started. Cuz how interesting. Try not to leave anything behind. You're extracting every bit of the liquid. But again, you said if you don't have a hot elution over the coffee, you don't get everything. Right. So you need to get as much as you can. Right, right. So the other thing, we mentioned I'm a health physicist yeah. earlier. So pop quiz, have you guys figured out what one of those <laughs> are yet? Let's ask the chat room. Do you know, there? by the way, there, I guarantee you we got the coffee fanatics in here. And they note, by the way, that you remind them somewhat of a character on Breaking Bad. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I hear that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> who didn't? Who came to a bad end? I don't want to give you any spoilers, <clears throat> but he made. He attempted using the lab equipment that they were also making methamphetamine with. Yeah. He attempted to make the perfect cup of coffee, and he mentioned pulling a slight vacuum. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> he didn't mention much more, so we don't know exactly. Well, I remember that what episode. <laughs> I remember that episode, and uh, <clears throat> my phone started lighting Did up. It? <laughs> For, is this what you're doing? <laughs> so, no, I'm not making meth. <laughs> you're making the closest thing to meth you could that's legal using caffeine. 
How much caffeine was in this bo uh, the the bile I just drank? About the back of the envelope calculation. Yeah. Uh, you just drank roughly two ventes oh, wow. worth of caffeine. Oh so, wow! That's like a couple of hundred milligrams. Four hundred? Is that what you were about to say? Something like Please that. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's a lot. Four hundred milligrams of vial. So the. <laughs> The important part is it's delicious, Leo. It is delicious, and I won't be sleeping tonight. Okay. Eventually. Actually, <laughs> actually that, that's the weird thing that I've found drinking Black Blood Earth, because I'm now the maximally exposed individual. Absolutely. At three years and change. Yep. I can go to sleep happily. I, it's really? willing You're myself to, to sleep. Oh, it's a, I will sleep now. Yeah. And I can do it. Really? If I've had six or seven cups of normal coffee, I can't do it. Do you, so there are other different qualities. There are other chemicals in coffee yeah. beyond caffeine. Yeah. Uh, so have you made a study of this uh, from a scientific perspective, or is it all trial and error, empirical? So working at UC Berkeley, I have friends who work in the chemistry department. It's got to be a big subject of conversation. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> so I offered samples for them to work with, and <clears throat> they're going to do a caffeine analysis on the gas chromatograph. Oh, good. And... No more friend, back of envelope. My friend came to visit me and said, I have some good news and some bad news. <laughs> and I said, well, what's the bad news? <laughs> there was so much caffeine. We, we blew the calibration <laughs> uh, on, on the filament and we couldn't get any numbers. I'm sorry. What's the good news? There is so much caffeine. We blew the filament. <laughs> we got no numbers. <laughs> So essentially, it's an unmeasurable amount of caffeine. Well, we we <clears throat> I, I lost my laboratory privileges at that point. It wasn't no, because well, that lab manager, because I handed her a bottle and thanks for letting us do work on her machine. She said, "You killed my machine and you gave me a <laughs> bottle of this." Thank you. Get out. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Are there actual machines designed to measure caffeine, or is this a general purpose? Uh... There are machines specifically designed to do it. Uh, aqueous extraction, gas chromatograph columns are not terribly common and also expensive. Right. We didn't have one of those at our disposal, okay. so we had to do um, some other extraction techniques <laughs> to try to figure out the caffeine analysis. <laughs> and we may have broke some things. <laughs> now, speaking of a bottle, if by the way... you want to sell this stuff to normal humans... <laughs> so what's of this? A you make a... Oh, no. Holy cow, because I've only seen these in vials. <laughs> so this, this is a whole bottle of this stuff. This is actually a gift for you. Uh, Are you trying to kill me? Maybe. <laughs> so. And I, by the way, I am not a novice at this. I am not a neophyte at coffee and caffeine consumption. I consider myself fairly advanced uh, in this area. And still, it makes me... Very scared. This should keep you going for <laughs> roughly a month. Let me see. This is great. Is, do you, are you selling this now at Funeranium Labs? Yes. That is a one liter bottle. <laughs> a black blood of the earth. I love With, the label. That's actually made by the artist Molly Crabapple, who is another caffeine fiend, who I gave her a couple bottles at the be bequest, behest of Warren Ellis. Actually, if for those of you on the internet who are familiar with Warren Ellis. Oh, everything yeah. is Warren Ellis's fault. He bl blame him for everything. Yes. Uh, in the early days of me tinkering with this, I'd been discussing it on LiveJournal, and Warren had been following with rapt attention. I wasn't aware he had. I used Warren for my very first international shipping test for... He's in England. He's in Britain, right? He's in England. Yeah. To see if it could go overseas without getting interdicted by authorities. <laughs> And I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> to would it still taste good in arrival? And it did. And he asked me, could I please caffeinate his evil dwarf, Molly Crabapple? And I happily did so. She then, right after Christmas, said, can I please make a label for black blood for you? Oh. And I said, ow, wrist twist, yeah. please. And then she sent me an email a, a week later. I said, I don't know what to do. Uh, I've been thinking about an octopus enveloping the earth, but that reminded me way too much of the Kraken label. I'm lost help. This is I so good. I was already several beers into the evening, and I said, the beer tells me that <laughs> coffee was first discovered by goat herds in Ethiopia who noticed their herds got a little jumpy and bouncy I after nibbling true. on the bushes. Yeah, bouncy, yeah. So the beer tells me a science goat 
with hardware. Run. Oh, and he needs a fabulous mustache. So the ineffable mustachioed goat of science came oh, to heaven. Oh, he's beautiful. So thank you, Molly, again for making oh, this for me. Oh, that is that is great. And on the on the back, by the way, I'm now looking at the uh, at the provenance, and this is Kona, so this is extra special. You're welcome. This is extra extra special. Do you, I, I That's find, actually where I started. I love Kona. I have to say, a, uh, a classic Kona pea berry. There's nothing. Every opportunity I get, every opportunity any of you get, go to the Captain Cook coffee. That's where I get mine. It, they have, at any given time, at least thirty coffees yeah. on on tap for you to try yeah. and you will leave the co-op vibrating yeah it's delicious it's amazing it says on the back the black blood of the earth or bb o t e is a cold extraction concentrate of single geographic coffee varietals from around the world in the interest of not damaging or masking the delicate flavors of cream and sugar so you were very kind when i said that i was doctoring my coffee. Yeah, whatever you like. That's nice of you. In the process <laughs> of leaving harsh, harsh bitterness and acidity behind, the caffeine was super concentrated as a pleasant surprise. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Serendipity. Served cold and undiluted, which would be in a shot glass. Yes, shot glasses are a very good measure. In the United States, we don't have a standard shot. Yeah. Um, it's somewhere between an ounce and a half to two ounces if you ask for a shot in the U.S. Right. So a sh an ounce, 43 and a half milliliters. That's enough. Shot glasses are a good way to measure. Yeah, yeah. This is 50 milliliters per, yes. per vial. So just that'll give you an idea of where you're going there. Uh, mixed I, with three parts hot water. That's what we just had. Yep. And by the way, delicious. I was Basically a little, an Americano. It's an Americano. Yeah, I was a little reluctant to do that because I thought, well, golly... But it's actually quite, it's really, this is a cup of coffee, kind of like what you would be. This is my email ritual in the morning. Um, if I just have a shot straight and cold, then I have to go directly into email without the pleasure of my <laughs> mug of coffee yeah, to keep me, keep me company. We'll talk about the mugs in a sec. And then in equal proportions, which I have to try, I haven't tried that, was vodka. That would be your Kahlua. Mm -hmm. And what kind of vodka do you like or recommend? My personal favorite yeah. is Hangar One Straight Vodka, which okay. is by the folks down in Alameda at the St. Yeah. George Spirits Distillery. Yeah, they distill it right there. Well, they, they make it. The vodka now belongs to someone else, but they still make it oh, at, okay. at, Hangar, at St. George Hangar Spirits. One. Uh, so that's, I'm going to save this for that. <laughs> 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 Ooh, actually, that, that should be That's, enough to keep everyone here going for a while. We're going to have a party. <laughs> that is very kind of you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, <laughs> Philip. You're so, welcome. So, uh, but I want to know more about this setup. So you try different grinds. Uh, tell me about the grind you use. Are you using a very fine grind or are you using a more coarse grind? Finish. Finish. Uh, de depending upon which particular bean I'm working on. I've for each and every bean, I've had to tinker up and down to find what's ideal for I find, it. I find that's true, too, isn't it? That the, it's really bit different beans, different grinds. For example, this one, which is Death Wish, uh, this is a Robusta coffee, 100% Robusta, from a couple guys up in Rochester, New York, who took a totally different approach to coffee, ah. which was I got high caffeination by serendipity, as you said. They intentionally set out to kill their customers. <laughs> with love. Uh, Normally we drink Arabica beans. Yes. Uh, in fact, in the early in the my work with this, I, I was trying to think, I've, ta oh, I've tasted this Arabica. Right. Is there any such thing as a good Robusta? Right. Robusta is considered kind of a cheaper... Yeah, it, your M MGB that used to be lying in the, the bottom <laughs> shelf of the, right. the grocery store. Right. <laughs> And pretty much going to the roasters around the Bay Area, if I mentioned, so what about Robusta? There's, shh, 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 get out, get out, get out. Because if you so much as breathe the word Robusta, you had contaminated their roastery. Oh, uh, wow, <laughs> wow. Not so, apparently. No. So there, there was a couple guys in Rochester, New York, who always have been complimented by their patrons. Of, That's a good, strong cup of coffee. <laughs> and they sort of scratched their head and went, That's French roast. Uh, that's... Uh, I'm sure the flavor is strong, but it's been burnt within the cinder and has very little caffeine left. Right. Because the longer you roast something, the less right. caffeine you have as you've driven off more oils. Right. So they decided to try to fix that for their customers, where they actively sought out the highest caffeine content, robusta coffee they could find, so that they, when they did that full 
French roast on it, it still had a lot of caffeine left for their customers. There was a gentleman in Baltimore by the name of test subject Chris Beck, <laughs> who was about to head to the uh, SCA event, the Pensick War, up in Pennsylvania. And he said, I need something to keep me awake for days, and I don't want to do meth. Oh, dear. So I've looked at this Death Wish stuff, and it looks great. And I really love Black Blood because it does the business. Right. Have you considered making Black Blood out of Death Wish? Ooh. For you, I will. And there were two extra bottles, which I went, eh, put it up on the prototypes and and damaged goods section on the, the store. And they were gone in five minutes. Wow. Along with a long list of emails. Could you make more of that? Is it, I can. You're practically a pusher, man, at this point. I push nothing. <laughs> People just say, say please. Uh, the... the <laughs> the 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 death wish is actually not a flavor I like. It is the only black blood I make. I'm not fond of. Uh, the general rule. But I've now had, I want to try it, of course, oh, and everybody at home wants to? to try it. My my <laughs> my general rule, and I've got asked this question a lot of times. Is there any coffee you make you don't like? And, That's one. Huh? And I said, well, generally, if I didn't like it, there's no way in hell I'm going to share it with anyone. Right. I like you. Right, uh, right, right. But uh, this is one that... But one... Death Wish is the one, okay, enough people demand it, and apparently enough people like it, and my tongue is the only one that doesn't. However, I have found a recipe that it is delicious with. Again, we're going to discuss more alcohol here. Uh, three parts absinthe over ice, let loose. Two parts Death Wish, and stir... It looks like a three-day-old bruise. It is ugly and greenish-brown. It looks like it hurts before you even drink it. It tastes delicious. It's like New Orleans chicory coffee. Oh, interesting. It, it's got that, that licorice root beer yeah, yeah. flavor to it. I bet it would be good, actually, yeah, now that you mention it. it and it's a, since there are very few absinths that are less than 140 proof, uh, yeah, it's... It's a speedball. It is. <laughs> uh, it, it, if, if you add a dash of Chipotle vodka to it oh, in a pint glass and fill the rest of the pint glass up with... <laughs> are you hurting, Leo? <laughs> yes. Fill the rest of the pint glass up with chocolate soy milk. This is a drink known as Andy's Breakfast. Does Andy consume this daily? Not daily. Yeah. Andy would have to take a few weeks to recover. Andy is the tasting room manager at St. George Spirits. Wow. And is not human. No kidding. <laughs> Wow, this is so cool. We're, we're talking to Philip uh, Broughton, Broughton uh, of Funranium Labs. He is Funranium on uh, Twitter. And his website, where you can buy what we're talking about, is fun, funraniumlabs.com. Uh, There's also uh, plenty of uh, BS and blather to enjoy and read there. There is. Well. There's great stuff. You know, one thing I find about coffee people is they have lots of energy to write, <laughs> write about coffee. Yep. <laughs> Yep, lots of lots of time and ah, it's three a.m. Who I'll needs to sleep? I'll write something. Uh, so you can get the Black Blood of the Earth sample. So now let, let me let me. Uh, okay, we. I, gosh, there's so much to talk about, and I've had a, a, an entire cup of this stuff. So. I've noticed you're talking considerably faster than we started. I am definitely uh, buzzed. Welcome. <laughs> and it's legal. Um, I wouldn't feed it to anybody under the age of maybe twenty-five. Um, let me so so you so you so you're playing with different ways of doing this. Again, the caffeine you just said is in the oils. So you, you gotta get the oils. Mm -hmm. That's also a lot of the flavor. The acidity and bitterness, you're content with leaving that behind. Yes. Yes. Um and so what do you so you're playing with grinds, you're playing with temperature. Temperature. Time. So it's not always this uh, thirty two degrees, zero degrees. It's generally as close to that as I can stay. So, so you do think that the coldest possible? You got, you got to hold something cost, constant to work against. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've also been asked by a lot of people, do you ro have you ever considered roast, roasting your own right, beans? Right, right. And I, I've had to admit, of, I have only so many skills, and I'm going to leave that to people who yeah. really know what they're doing. And it sounds like you're go. going to interesting places to get your beans, like deathwishcoffee.com. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're fun people. <laughs> I, I have been to most of the small roasters all around the Bay Area. I have... Actually, after Warren Ellis 
uh, received his six pack and uh, I could feel his dance of delight. That's great. 6,000 miles away. I got dropped an email by some folks up in Seattle, uh, Cafe Vita, asking, do you experiment with people's stuff? Oh, I haven't before, but if you want to send me something, sure, I'll try it. One of the coffees they sent me actually ended up being my very favorite, and which is the Guatemalan Mundo Nuevo, which oh, unfortunately they're out of, Yeah, which is heartbreaking because I would kill for more. Yeah. It, well, next year. Probably sometime around August. Yeah. Uh, they... The problem with doing small geographic locality coffees from single farms is they run out like that. Sure. Which you do a... But you oh, know, wait till next year. It's not bad because it creates hunting. a scarcity. It creates, uh, you know, it's not, uh, if there's not a plenitude, you enjoy it when you've got it. And yeah. then you have to wait till August or whatever. Patience. 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 So what is so? You're, are you doing this in your house still, or do you have a special lab somewhere that you do this? Uh, the la the loft where I live has a part of it that's been sectioned off as the lab and workshop. And and I imagine over time you've acquired tables and glassware and. I already had a hell of a lot you, of glassware. <laughs> you were almost set already, huh? Pretty much. It's like me in podcasting. You know, I had all the gear, so I had to do it. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so okay. And if I were to go in there, would it be a forest of tubes and beakers and... Uh, we'll, we'll safely call it a serious earthquake hazard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of glass waiting to suffer gravity. And do you, first thing in the morning, you get up and you start a bunch of stuff? I mean, how does... And then you go to work and then you come back and you finish it? Or how does Actually, this... most of it's done after work. Okay. Uh, so a lot of late nights. The... How long does it take to brew... One of these vials. Well, that's sectioned off of a larger run. I, as I said, I end up making nine to twelve liters a day. And that would be a single varietal yes. for each of those. And and when you say a day, is it an eight-hour process? How long does it take? My full extraction time is about five hours after work. So it's pretty quick. You've got it down to a science, so to speak. M most of it's some waiting. It, to just sit the, over those couple days of just eh, it's doing its thing right I'll, I'll get back to you when it's for the the end stage to right. pull it all off oh so you're saying five hours of active work yeah how much total time from beginning to end total time at least 48 oh really okay so it is quite a long process yeah. how interesting do you want to tell me any more or i mean you really are, well, are you, i don't want to i don't want i mean I, first of all i don't think there's a lot of competition are there other people doing this there are a uh, chameleon coffee is there actually, are has done a very good job with theirs. Uh, I've received <laughs> uh, several hundred emails for these people are ripping you off. Right. Uh, no, no, they're not. They're, it, they're doing is, their thing. This has been going on for a while, this cold mm -hmm. brew stuff, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they're doing their thing. I I think it's I very... Had, I had some chameleon that I enjoyed, some I didn't. This, they had some black blood they enjoyed, and some they didn't. I think it's very uh, open of you to even mention them. That's impressive. They, well, if, I, if I'm to be brutally honest, this is my hobby. Right. Uh, you don't make a living doing this. It, it, is, it, is, it is a hobby that provides some <laughs> cash. But you're doing but okay. It, it's, I'm never giving up the day job because mainly I enjoy playing with radioactive materials. So <laughs> you, you can't pay me enough to stop playing with and, radiation. And, I, and you wash your hands thoroughly after you come home, right? That's the work day. <laughs> <laughs> but Actually, probably, the probable case is this is safer than anything else because you are a health physicist, so yeah. you make sure that it's safe. For a given value of safe of... Those chameleon guys, who knows? Oh, no. They don't know. They aren't it, trained. It, it, speaking of safety, uh, the one-liter bottle which you received, uh, don't chug that. <laughs> but also, by back-of-the-envelope calculations, one liter... <laughs> Consumed acute dose, so chug. This chug. would actually kill you. You are in the neighborhood of the lethal dose 50 for caffeine. And you wouldn't feel good. That means 50% of the people who drank this would die. Yes. <laughs> if you drank it all at once. All at once. And you wouldn't feel good, more important. You would feel not so great long before long that Long before. Happened. You would, wi oh. frankly, you would wish you were dead long before you'd actually expire. You would start enjoying hallucinations. Really? So one of the fun things I've learned about caffeine in the course of doing the grand pharmacopoeia of coffee is while caffeine, everyone calls it a stimulant, it's better categorized as hallucinogen. It's what? a focus drug. 
Well, it does. It, now, I remember it blocks the neuroreceptors that are normally used for the, the chemicals that cause sleep. Yes. Have you? The reason why people always say, I need a cup of coffee before I get to work on this, is so they can pay attention to what they're doing. It focuses you. And with a good mug of black blood of the earth, I'd often do the, oh, hey, five months, sorry, five hours went by. It's lunch. I missed lunch. Right. Hyper focus. Uh, generally, when people take hallucinogens, it's, I want to see everything, man. <laughs> I want to be open to the world. But the point of caffeine is, I blinders. see this. Yeah, it's blinders. I am paying intense attention to that. But it is a modifying your brain chemistry in the it same is. way that hallucinogenic drugs modify your brain chemistry. Now, I, having mentioned the what lethal dose 50 is, you, you hit uh, caffeine toxicity earlier than that. <laughs> uh, caffeinism would be better described actually as theophilinism, which is one of the other active components in hot brewed coffee, because there's more than just caffeine in coffee beans. Oh, interesting. So uh, it's not the caffeine also, that is doing... Not necessarily. It's not, the only, it's not the only psychoactive. It is not the only chemical in coffee when it's hot brew. My, my running theory is working with Black Blood of the Earth, I am selectively extracting caffeine over theophylline which if odds in favor, you've probably heard of that courtesy of tea, because that's the main thing you get out of tea. Theophylline, and, and I was always of the impression that the th theophylline was almost a, a relaxant. <laughs> that's not the no. case. Okay. If I were to prescribe theophylline to you, it would be as an asthma drug. Yeah, that's how it's used for COPD we'll, and we'll stuff. Yeah. Set your heart racing, open the bronchi, and you'll get jittery, which sounds a, real, a whole lot like you've had a whole bunch too much coffee. So I don't want the uh, theophylline. You might. I mean, if you're having an asthma attack. <laughs> uh, so, so you're in effect selecting for caffeine. It's my working theory. <laughs> uh, I have definitely noticed that if I have uh, the second dose of the day too early, uh, this, by the way, is seven hours after my morning dose. So, a okay, I'll be fine, love. Don't oh, worry good. about me. <laughs> uh, I will start hearing the hooting and whistling of the outer gods. Wow. Uh, you start getting tones and whines in your ear. The thing you're looking You've had at that will to you? start vibrating a little bit. Yes, I have. Oh, dear. Uh, so you, while you may be tempted to have a second cup, wait a bit before the, you do that. And that's the problem because coffee is so good, and this is so delicious, you do actually want to have more of it. Yeah. I'm really tempted to try that no. death wish. No. Please? No. <laughs> tomorrow. You can have some tomorrow. <laughs> Please. Bad Leo. Yeah, it's because I mean, it's really good. It's very. It's different. really good. And unfortunately, I'm out too. Uh, do you do you drink this? You drink it hot. Generally, uh, when I'm doing the the tasting, mm, it's so good. The tasting with extraction to make sure that I like the result of any, every every single batch I taste, which means I'm having some at night. I've had to make a rule for myself. I won't do Death Wish extractions after 2 p.m. because Death Wish leaves me staring at the ceiling. Yeah. Uh, you couldn't just taste it, take a little taste. Like, uh, 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 and just see how that is. No, a couple sips. You, you have to make... Even that's too much. You have to do a couple sips to acclimate the tongue. Uh, else, just to make sure you're not tasting your dinner beforehand. Mm, my precious. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh And... Ah, uh, oh, who cares? Um... All right, well, we're going to talk about temperature because uh, I also want to talk about the Steins of Science in just a moment because uh, I have one. And, you know, you may think you've experienced the thermos flask, the vacuum flask. You may think you know what uh, a flask of, uh, is, but no. No, my friend <laughs> Philip has figured out a much better way to keep your cold beverages cold and your hot beverages hot. Before we talk about that, let's talk about... Our good friends at Pond5, the world's stock media marketplace. If you're up at 2 in the morning and have the urge to create a PowerPoint presentation on the value of caffeine in uh, daily creative life, perhaps you need some illustrations. Where better to go than Pond5.com? Look at this. 1.4 million video clips. There were 12,000 new ones this week alone. 8.2 million photos. 23,000 fresh Jeez. this week. <laughs> Somebody's up there drinking the black blood of the earth. 753,000 illustrations. 600, no, I'm sorry, 83,000 music tracks. 276,000 sound effects. This is great for presentations, for podcasts, for any kind of multimedia creation. Pond 5 
And one of the reasons there's so much great stuff there, it is a, it's a marketplace. In fact, uh, the Pond5 folks tell me that many of their customers are also creators and sell their content on Pond5. Uh, prices are very affordable. What you're getting is royalty-free media. That means you pay once something from like $2 for sound effects, $5 for a stock video clip, and, and then it's yours to use and, and keep and, and, and incorporate into your productions forever. Uh, beautiful stuff, too. 1080p, super high quality uh, video. Um, amazing free stock video clips every month. You might want to check those out. You could just download those, use those in your presentations. Stock images. Um, and the people who use Pond5 and create content to sell on Pond5 love it because it is the fairest place for stock media creators. They give the highest royalties and you, you set the price. So uh, if you've created a beautiful image that you know people would want to use of, uh, I don't know, the Easter bunny, because Easter's coming up, you could uplo upload it to Stock5, sell it on uh, Pond5, and sell it on Pond5, set the price, get 50%. It is the best royalty in the market. Uh, you're happy. Your customers are happy. It's just a great place. Feel good about what you're using. Pond5.com. Now here's... Uh, our special offer. I, are they still doing this? I thought this was only going to be in November and December. I'm, I'm hoping this is still going. Still going. That's great. If you go to uh, our website, pond5.com/triangulation, let me just check it just to make sure it's still doing it. Uh, you get 50 free stock media files of all kinds. There are a couple of benefits to doing this. One of the reasons they want it costs you nothing. Yeah, they're still doing it. Uh, is because you'll get a sense of what the browser's like, of how to use Pond5. You'll be setting up a Pond5 account. Uh, and so I think they know that if you know they give you these free, you're going to get some. You're going to get some benefit from it. Look at this video of Stonehenge. This is gorgeous stuff. Pond5. Oh, and you can see. I like this too. You can see the creator. And you can see what else he or she has done. And uh, that's nice, too, because you, you can become a fan of somebody. Um, listen to some of the sound effects. Fiery smoke, look at that. There are people who specialize in this stuff. Just, just great stuff. Pond5.com slash triangulation for oh, 50 free. Fire. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> there are people who specialize in... By the way, there's a watermark on it, but when you buy it, of course, there's no watermark who specialize in this. This is hard to shoot yourself, as I'm sure you would imagine. Uh, lighting is difficult and all that. And, I know and, where my skills are. They're yeah, not that. that's not that. <laughs> but let's say you wanted to do some you know, great creative and, you know, uh, presentation of what it feels like when you've had 200 milliliters of the black blood of the earth. Then you could have... Ex See, I love this. This is beautiful. Pond5.com, I love them! And you will, too. Try them out today. They're theophylline free. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll like it for that reason alone. Um, there, you know, what's interesting is more and more research says that caffeine, coffee in particular, is good for you. I've been sent a variety of those pages. Yeah. Every time a new one pops up, yeah. Phil, you're saving us. Yeah. I'll thank you. And, and most Back of the uh, anecdotal <laughs> evidence that it's bad for you has been debunked. So feel free. Consume Just with gusto. But not mass quantities. But not more than one vial a day. <laughs> oh, my. So I love these Steins of Science. Now, oh, you make I, I, these... Sorry, I, I see a question that has popped up. Oh, please, yes. Answer any questions. Civet questions. Cat Coffee. I, which I have had and like. I have gotten asked many occasions. When are you making that? I have made it before. And? It didn't taste that great. Didn't like it. It, it wasn't that much different right. than the normal hot it's, brew. It's very expensive. The premise being that the civet cats eating these beans and passing them through their digestive tracts are in some way leaching out it the bitterness. It wasn't bad, and that's exactly what they're doing. Yeah. The digestive enzymes of the cats are cleaning up and filtering out, uh, soaking out of the beans. Polishing it, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> the, <laughs> that's one way to look at uh, <laughs> It didn't taste much different. Yeah, it and does if you it, hot brew it. It it because you're cold brewing it. I bet you don't. There wasn't much left right. to go. So, I I've gotten asked, have you tried the civet cat? Have you tried the elephant coffee? Have you elephant? Really? Yes. Uh, um, they you know you know the story of how this came about. I uh, it's in Wikipedia, so it's got to be true. <laughs> oh no! Don't get my girlfriend started. <laughs> Is she a librarian by any chance? No, she's a chemist, and she, every 
every time she started a class, she had to begin with Wikipedia, not a primary source. <laughs> Secondary. Feel free to start your research point, there. Start but there. Don't end there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, oh, I think this is true. Is that when the uh, Dutch uh, uh, colonialists came? I can't remember where Sumatra or wherever came. Yep. They took over the coffee Batavia. plantations. Batavia. Batavia. But whatever. One of them places. Something with an A at the end. They came and they took over the coffee plantations and they told the indigenous population, you can harvest the coffee, you can grow the coffee, but the coffee is for us. We're drinking it. And, of course... It commanded a, a healthy, healthy premium. Yeah. Right? It was not Ta quite opium values. Yeah, but, but take away coffee from somebody like you and me... Bad and you're times. Gonna... <laughs> Bad times. <laughs> you're not going to be... So the indigenous people and started to notice that the civic cats that came and raided the coffee plantations tended not to digest the bean in, in its entirety, but to excrete it. Mm -hmm. And started collecting the beans, which the Dutch apparently didn't want, from the cat poop, <laughs> brewing it up and having a fine cup of joe. Mm -hmm. And so that became a, a, a local tradition that eventually the Dutch probably the, figured that out. There are a couple, couple coffee varieties that have always been touted as being very mild. Right. That if you don't like coffee, you'll love these ones. Uh, but I like coffee, the, so I don't. The Sadamo, uh, Ethiopian Sadamo, uh -huh. and Sulawesi, which is and another what it, Indonesian. And what is it that's characteristic of them that, that people don't like normally? Is it bitter? Uh, it's bitterness. No, it's uh, the generally people don't like the bitterness or acid. Right. But these two particular varieties are normally quoted as being, these are very mild. Mild, not bitter. Which means there's not much there to start with. Right, right. So... I have to have something I can extract from. <laughs> if there's nothing to it's extract be from, to throw away. <laughs> I, there just wasn't much anywhere to go. So I've tried it, guys. I did. You don't have to ask anymore. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not having any more civet because I see I see now that the modern civet coffees they're, they're kept in pens and it's not a very pleasant yeah. environment for them. So because now makes, it's industrial production, yeah, makes sense to me. That's the Kopi Luwak coffee, and it's also insanely expensive. It is, but it was worth trying one, at least yeah, once. once. What's your favorite? My favorite is the Guatemalan Mundo Nuevo oh, that's right, that, uh, yeah. that Cafe Vita provided to me. A close second that I'm working with now is actually from a coffee roaster in Chicago named Ipsento. Uh, they have a Panamanian that I'm very fond of, that f fresh grinding of the bean, uh, putting it up into process and extracted and drinking at every stage of the process. It was Blueberries. Oh, neat. Blueberries and milk chocolate. Is, oh, neat. Do you have any of that on, on your store right now? Not right now. So that's one thing to note, is that you are making this, and you're making it with whatever is available, because it, it only has... It has shown up in a couple people's Sampler 2 packs, oh. because the Sampler 2 packs have Death Wish, Panama, Colombia, Peru in it, and two mystery vials, which uh. are at my whim. So in my, my whim at times has included people getting the Absento Panama. But you will get the Nuevo Venus. The Nuevo Venus, unfortunately, that which we gone. just had. That, That's the last of it? That finished in December. That was the substitute for the Mundo Nuevo. It again, was good. It was really again, good. Again, small batches. I'm sad. Small farmers. They do good work. That make me they need to make more. So, in fact, that's how I got introduced. You get uh, uh, five vials. Ten. Ten vials. Oh, that's good. So they're they're Two of each. five dollars each. Pretty much. And yeah. uh, <laughs> and you and it's a good way to sample it. There's a, basically what a couple of cups of coffee in there, unless you do what I did, which is pour the entire vial. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Not hello, sample pack too. There you go, right there. <laughs> uh, and I highly recommend this. Um, now you're not going to get this right away because you, you, you're making it right now. So it says the 20th. So you saw that the pre-orders will be completed by January 20th for the slots that are currently up. It's all your fault, Louis. Leo. <laughs> tell me, tell. Now I don't know. Did we do that on the air? No, I think it was before the show began. So uh, Rich Siegel says, "Black blood of the earth. You got to try this." I order some. What happened? <clears throat> So he held up his empty I bottle think, to you. I, I think we almost put you out of business. <laughs> no, no, you just cost me two months of sleep and uh, caused a lot of angry faces from my fiance. From, I'm are sorry. you ever coming to bed? So are, you, are you done yet? Can we ever have the house back from shipping oh, boxes? Oh, my God. Uh, Good. <laughs> but I hope we introduce some people to your, your coffee. With every stage of a wave that has hit Funeranium Labs, I have learned a valuable lesson. What's that? First, it was Warren Ellis proofings to make sure that the servers could handle him. Him alone? Him, him alone. <laughs> 
So really, I had hit the point of, yes, I've worn Ellis proof to the website. Then you happened. <laughs> And I take it I, I was as bad as Warren Ellis? Far worse. <laughs> the Twit Army is large. It is large and it loves its coffee. <laughs> but the server survived. Good. I didn't have inventory controls in place, however, which is how I ended up with a two month backlog that I got to do a oh. lot of apologizing for. Oh. For I am so sorry. This is going to take me a while to get to. I am so and sorry. And I feel guys. guilty because I jumped the line. I think my order kind of. Got ahead of the others. Yeah. Well, you asked for a Stein and coffee. So. Yes, that's how I knew I would get through to you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a Stein, too. The Steins are not cheap. No, because they're built with scientific hardware. <laughs> they're amazing. They are also not pretty, unless you like form to follow function. These are these are the various uh, Steins. I have that, that uh, the so one you're... Uh, this is the one I was drinking out of earlier. Yeah. This is the <laughs> 350 mil. I have the larger one, I believe. No, actually, you have... I have that one? You have the ruggedized version of this one. <laughs> because I guess you thought you might have been clumsy. <laughs> I did. So why... No, I did. And that's exactly right. So to describe what makes these special. Okay. So the Steins of Science are built using a laboratory liquid nitrogen doer. These are the vessels we use to keep liquid nitrogen or any cryogenic fluid in. The doer is the vessel. Uh, it is you, the vessel itself. And it's, a, it's really a vacuum uh, it's a, the, a va bottle. A, a vacuum flask. Right, flask. Uh, the, it was made by John Dewar at the turn of the last century. Oh, he is related to the Dewar whiskey family. Yeah. He was a teetotaler. He was making gear for the family. We don't hold that against him. <laughs> when he patented this, and then it went up for licensing, in America, the company that bought the license and trademarked it was Thermos. Right. Which is why Dewar flasks are known as Thermoses or were for decades sold on the, on the market. Right. The very best Thermos you can buy out there today, which is going to be a double glass walled silvered Thermos. Generally, you'd have to go down to a, a thrift store to find a really good one, or you have to loot your grandfather's garage. They don't make them as good anymore. They don't make them as good as yeah. they used to be. Yeah. The ones that Grandpa would yell, don't drop it. Yeah, because I remember uh, many a time coming home from school with, with shattered glass and no thermos. Yeah. Because they're made of glass. It, it, but it just went, it broke. It didn't bang. No, it didn't bang. So the cheaper thermoses were just isolated double walls. Right. So With air in between. Glass, air, glass. Air is a very poor conductor of heat. Right. So just that insulating layer did a very good They're job at, yeah. at holding heat. Yeah. The better ones, the better ones had a vacuum pulled in that space between to reduce the conductivity. Right. So it went... So if there's, if there's no okay. molecules in there, it's not going to conduct heat at all. Ah, so we're, we're beating the punch. Leo, I'm taking you back to high school. Are you ready? I'm ready. Back to physics class. Maybe name the three of modes rope. of... No. <laughs> Please name the three modes of thermal transfer. I have no idea. Wait a minute. Oh, oh. John, John Slanina, say it out loud. I'll say conduction. Conduction. One. Radiation. Radiation. Yeah. And... <laughs> Reposter has it. Convection. Convection. You're cheating, but you're reading. He, well, he did this, though, but that <laughs> looks like a convection yes, current. So, all right, I got it. So, Convection, conduction, and radiation. So radiation is the sun's heat is radiating on you. Or, no, actually, any anything that is above absolute zero is constantly Radiates. losing right. energy right. as right. electromagnetic radiation. Right. Uh, convection is the max mi mass mixing of materials. Cold things aren't swirling around a lot, but hot coffee, hot tea, right. you're seeing the steam roiling off of it. That's convective heat loss there. Last one's conduction, which is body-to-body -body transfer. So when right. you pick up your pint glass of beer, you are warm, glass is cold because it's touching cold beer. You can feel the heat passing from you Absolutely. to your beer, which is sad because your beer is getting warm. <clears throat> In the exact equivalent to your hand getting cold. Right. <laughs> the point of having the, the doer is to try to cut all three of those con transfer modes as much as you possibly can. Oh, interesting. Not by just conductive. Not just conductive. By, by having a vacuum, you have a very weak thermal mm. circuit right at the top. Right. As you, as you can see, looking in something there, something has to touch. It's silvered. That thing. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> so, there, yes, yeah, something has to touch. There's very little space to do thermal conduction across to have that heat transfer to your fluid. As I said, cold things, not a lot of convective heat change. And it is silvered to minimize 
heat radiation going into it, being right. radiated into right. your fluid. So really, your only place to do thermal transfer is to air, which is not a good conductor right. of heat, right. or by your sipping with your filthy monkey heat. <laughs> That's a, that is a quote. You haven't been able to solve that one, I take it. <laughs> no, because you do have to drink your drink. Who's, whose quote is that? That actually comes from the Caffeinatrix of Portland. So Portland, you're the local person who distributes black blood up there. She has dubbed herself the Caffeinatrix. Her name is Jessica Hebert. I uh, love Jessica Hebert. <laughs> she, was, she had all of her gear at, out, out and was doing one of her own experiments working at Oregon uh, State Hospital. Is that for the criminally insane or just the regular insane? Plain old insane. Okay. Plain old insane. Uh, <laughs> it's not Arkham Asylum. They pay her and everything. You don't uh, want to give them caffeine. <laughs> so she was looking at her stein, which she had sitting out outside of the laboratory with her soda in it. She was looking at her experiment and wondered how well her stein that she'd, I'd given her for her wedding was really working. So she put her process thermocouples on it and regularly went out to go take sips of her drink, come back to work and found that she was gaining heat at roughly a third of a degree an hour. Wow. Despite sipping it and, quote, adding her dirty monkey dirty heat. Dirty monkey heat. That's very, very little. So, you know, you're gonna, it's going to take you 30 hours to raise it 10 degrees. It's basically inert. Pretty much. So uh, this would be for keeping beer cold. That was the original reason it happened was because of Oktoberfest... <laughs> 2008. I can't wait to bring that to Munich, I gotta tell you. <laughs> so, <laughs> and by the way, it comes with a very nice uh, scientific grade stopper as well. So that uh, I presume, oh, now see, that's beautiful. Oh, that's there. a. Uh, that, have, to have a peeky poo. That is a work of art. So, which one is this? Is not the ruggedized. That is this, no, that is the decidedly not ruggedized. Yeah. That is the 665 shiny brass. That is beautiful. And so it comes with this stopper. If you put a hot or cold liquid in here with a stopper and did not add your monkey heat, it, it would go probably days or weeks without much. Days. Days, yeah. Uh, yeah. Your, the one you're holding right now, as you can see, the, the, the mirrored silvered glass there, unlike this one. Yeah, this is more like the one Which I have. Which has yeah. the aluminum shield on the side of oh, it. Oh, that's pretty. I like that, you know, too. Mine has seen a couple years of abuse. Yeah, it looks the like... The looks oxidization <laughs> on it. Prost! <laughs> oh, oh, yes, that's an important teaching opportunity. So what you have there is bare silvered glass right there. Bare silvered glass. So if you were to break that, it would shatter most spectacularly. Oh, this is not metal. That's not metal. That's bare oh, glass. Oh, okay. So... Remember do they was, make doors like that, that they're all glass? I guess yes, so. Yeah. they most certainly do. As I was telling you, the best thermoses had a vacuum pulled in them. The very best thermoses had about a tenth of an atmosphere of vacuum okay. in the space between them. These are laboratory gear. There is a ten millionth of an atmosphere. <gasps> Holy cow. When you break these... There's an explo the implosion. They implode. Yeah. It sounds like a gunshot yeah. going off as they shatter. Wow. That's so, why I got the rugged one. <laughs> yes. You treat them as delicately as you treat any other piece of glassware. I like, while those are beautiful, I like the full metal uh, This makes me, more. I'm afraid this is going to implode here. Oh, but it's, so, it. it's like a vacuum tube or a television, exactly. not a modern television, but an old under CRT. Vacuum. They're under vacuum. Of course, with that, that's a, now, are you making these or are you buying these? I'm purchasing doers that someone else has already made and then converting them into steins okay. with the magic of attaching a handle. <laughs> and now, hence, I, hence the, uh, the uh, clips around here. Now, I get asked by a lot of people, all you did was attach a handle. <laughs> what was and to which I, as the former cryotechs, attach a handle without breaking it. That's not easy. Means. Yeah. So you, you'll see there's a warning on the base there. That says, wear safety glasses, gloves, smock while consuming. No, this is not, this is not, because, this is not because it assumes you are a messy drinker. This is assu it assumes that you are using it for liquid nitrogen, which you ah. certainly can still do with it. So these. this is the original. Uh, so if I were to get some liquid nitrogen, this would be a very good thing to store yes, it in. which is why I have the warning label on there, because you can still use it for its original purpose. I might. Great for ice cream. I'm just thinking for making ice cream or uh, hard Liquid freezing. Liquid nitrogen cocktails are actually fairly nice. That's one of the things I did down in Antarctica. Tell me about that. Oh, dear. Okay. <clears throat> so. This is going to be the longest show ever.
I it's have no be idea the longest when we show end. ever. Just, I, I don't know. As you said, I am hyper focused now, and I think we've been going for twenty minutes, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Eventually, we have to get cocktails to continue this. But <clears throat> bring me the vodka. <laughs> oh dear. What's uh, the best vodka we have? Not that Grey Goose. We must have something better bad. than that. Is that okay? It's not bad. Look at my. Oh, how about the Crystal Skull? It's in my. Uh, it's in my office. If I known we could have drunk on this show, I would have brought my bar. <laughs> You don't have to bring a bar. No, no That's a little bit of Coles to, to Newcastle. <laughs> so this is great. So all right, uh, and we and by the way, I was told you have some good stories about Antarctica. Were you did you work there? or Were you just I visiting? I worked there for a year and a day at Amundsen Scott South Pole Station. Oh, I'm so jealous. We are actually on the 10 year anniversary of pretty much everything I did there. I was there what for fun. the 2002 what were you doing? 2003 season. My job was cryogenics science technician. So it was my job to keep things cold in Antarctica. In the Antarctica. An easy job, some might say. No. <laughs> uh, Antarctica's not cold enough. It isn't that cold. It's, it's only, cold. It's only, on average, minus 85 at South Pole Station. On Fahrenheit or, or Celsius? Fahrenheit. <laughs> That's pretty cold. Oh, dear. Oh, we've, we've, we've achieved the crystal head. Would you please <clears throat> carefully put on your apron, your smock... I've never opened this because it is autographed by Dan Aykroyd, but I've been waiting for oh, an occasion. Really? Oh, yeah, hi, Dan. I've been waiting for an occasion to uh, to open the you, Crystal Head vodka. You know, Dan Aykroyd. I I just watched. He makes this. I know. I, I just watched Sneakers again the other yeah. night. Yeah. So I have a friend. Is he in Sneakers? Yes, he is. He's mother in Sneakers. Oh, that's right. He's, yeah. he's their controller and and conspiracy nut. Yeah. Fantastic. I actually have a friend who is the, who, well, both friends, who make the comic book Atomic Robo. Oh, how fun. And they're working on some of their expanded projects. And as I was reading the script that Brian Clevenger was writing for an upcoming, when I looked at it, I went, I hear Dan Aykroyd in my head. Oh. You have, you have hit I Charles actually, Fort I perfectly. I have Dan Aykroyd's head right here, so it's perfect. <laughs> um... I'm going to let you do the honors. I've, I've peeled the plastic off, but uh, you know how to combine. Okay. Uh, now, we're going to have to split this because... Uh, I don't I'm want a whole lot a, of coffee. I'm not letting you have a whole lot of coffee. <laughs> I'm already not sleeping tonight. <sighs> and I was in Vegas this morning, so I, I really am... You know, hand me your bottle. Okay. Should I open this? No, no, hand me your bottle of black blood. Oh, no. Should we take the Kona in vain? By oh, careful it's... with that. That, that, too, you should wear an apron. <laughs> Look, he's taking out his, his leather man to open this thing up. No, this his is Gerber. Der Gerber. What is it? Der Gerber. Der Gerber Tour. Dein, ein Gerber Tour. Courtesy of the NASA Ames Space Center, which is... Oh, it's a NASA Gerber. Standard issue gear for them out there. Is it really? The astronauts use a Gerber tool? That's good no, enough. the people working the machine shops do, at least. Oh, yeah. It's very important to have friends who are machinists. They... Where do you get your, uh, your uh, doers... Uh, the doers are coming from a variety of manufacturers who are mostly sourcing from China. Uh -huh. I, I wish that we had Where more they have American manufacturers of them, but mostly... Young children movers. sucking as hard as they can to create the vacuums. I shouldn't do that while you're boring. <laughs> don't, don't make me laugh. <laughs> this is a very small amount yep. of that. Just here here you go. And then dash, I'll let you... Uh, dash. Because you know, you know how to make this Kahlua thing that you're making here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think Dan put this one in by himself. There's no Gerber tool for this. All right, there you go. Oh, Dan, how we miss you. <laughs> <laughs> Alas, poor Aykroyd. I knew him, Horatio. A man of infinite jest. <laughs> um, so these are intended both for uh, for hot and cold, but you you created them for beer initially. Thank you. Yep. It was actually uh, really both of the things that I have, Black Blood of the Earth and the Stein Science, came out of sad events. Oh. Black Blood came out of being diagnosed with diabetes. Yeah. The Steins of Science came out of receiving furloughs from the University of California. Oh dear. When we were having our budget troubles several yeah. years back. Yeah. I had. Well, that very first furlough day, I took my fiance in to work because she still had group meetings. She was still doing research. So I dropped her off, went back home, sitting in the kitchen in my underpants. <laughs> Something you'd be doing a lot of in the, in the days and weeks to come. This is not a day off. I still oh. have to go pick her up. So I can't, 
I can't start uh, having cocktails at nine in the morning. Oh, no. Uh, what am I going to do? Oktoberfest is this weekend. <laughs> Where's my stein? <laughs> and I have a nice earthenware stein. Sure. Tradi like, the traditional stein. Uh, by the way, uh, Prost. Prost. <laughs> you did it right. I, I don't think I could fit my hand in uh, there. By the way, if you have a stein and you are doing, uh, doing toasting, always handle-to-handle -handle toast. Uh, because Cause otherwise you can imagine if you have a fine i actually learned this courtesy of the owner of the tyrolean inn where i went to for for oktoberfest so back to the story yeah uh, was, and, and by the way it applies not only to fine earthenware steins but really you really wouldn't want to smash a flask uh glass mm. to glass is this oh yum mm. uh, <clears throat> Okay, you won me over. That's <laughs> remarkable. That's remarkable. Vodka's not sweet. Coffee's not sweet. Together they are. That's remarkable. At least black blood is not sweet. No, this Vodka's this sweet. tastes Together delicious. This is re this this is uh, a revelation. So, I went looking for earthenware stein. Couldn't find it. Yeah. But I opened my cabinet and I found the two liter doer that I bought a couple years before. <laughs> On the principle of, I don't know why I need a doer, <laughs> but, I, but I don't have a reason not to have a doer. <laughs> and I, I just sort of looked at it, did the squint. Stein. I can make a stein That's out neat. of that. And nine hours and quite a bit of blood later, I had one. <laughs> and we went to Oktoberfest that weekend at the Tyrolean Inn down in Ben Lomond. And you brought that. Actually, I did not bring the one that I made that day. Yeah. And the waitress came up and said, what is that? It's a beer stein made with a liquid nitrogen flask. <laughs> Do you want beer in it? Yes. It's two liters. It's a little heavy. And she gave me the most withering sneer. I do this. <laughs> and what would, took it away, came back with four moss on this hand, two moss on oh, my stein on the other, wow. just dropped on the table and said, the owner wants to know about that. Oh, that's neat. And the owner came out and I told him what I told what you regarding story. how it keeps beer cold. How would, doer, how would doers work? He said, how much? Uh, uh, I did a rough calculation of what my hourly wage is, how much blood I'd uh, expended building it, and came up with an off the top of it, uh, 800. He said, that's it? Uh, what? what? Uh, he went and got his stein out, which was, he, he brought out the beautiful earthenware stein with Neuschwanstein yeah. on it, yeah, yeah. and said, that cost me 3000 and it won't keep my beer as cold as what you've got. Excellent point. And you can one, look at the stein and drink with it. He's the one who the, taught me the, the handle clean because you don't yeah. want to destroy Neuschwanstein, all the beautiful art. And, 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 and if it were, uh, if it's a glass-sided flask, it's probably a good idea, too. Now, I didn't bring the number one with me. What's the number one? Oh, no. oh did uh -oh. you lose your mic there? Uh -oh. Just clip it back Lost on. My mic. You're, you're an engineer. You could figure this out. He's a trained physicist. Look at this. Wait a minute. What the cell? <laughs> it's a barrel. It's not. <laughs> this is the Imperial Gallon. <laughs> this is the 4.3 liter stein, which is very important to do backstrapping. <laughs> I have actually. You need a winch. <laughs> so when you're doing science, uh, weights and measures are so important. When I made this stein, or actually its predecessor, I. I looked up at why would we have 4,300 milliliters as a standard size for a doer? And I figured out that 4,300 milliliters is an imperial, imperial gallon. gallon. 4.3 liters. What's an imperial gallon? Imperial gallon's definition is 10 pounds of water. <laughs> this stein alone weighs 15 pounds. It's got a 25 pound. So chug when you there. fill that, and if you go to the website, there is, if you go to the the product listing for the 4300 Stein, there is a, the tail of my u evening using one. And you can see how much beer it took to fill this. It was two magnums of Anchor Steam Christmas along with, I think, five more 12 ounce bottles. And it was, it was a workout while I drank because it was a 25 pound arm curl. That got progressively lighter by like a half ounce of time. It was, it was I, <laughs> I'm not in good enough shape to drink with this stein. I was crippled on my right side for three days afterwards. <laughs> Trust me, by the way. Uh, wow, you can buy this. It's only $515. It's a bargain. So 
to the, that first Stein when I was asked how much it costs, that was based upon how long did it take me to make Stein number one? And I didn't You've really know. faster. I, I figured out the fine art of making it. Oh, God, can't leave my <laughs> fine drink behind. You brought some beautiful Steins. So these are all at funraniumlabs.com at the mm -hmm. store there. Um, the, the Have you ever broken the flask making these? Yes, I have. Yeah. As I was saying about That's the warning scary. label on it, I leave it on because you might choose to use it with right. liquid nitrogen for human beverages. That's not a worry for the stein disintegrating. Right. But you better believe I'm wearing goggles and face shield and apron while I'm making it. Because yeah. if one's going to fail while constructing, right. it will fail on me. When you cl clamp these on, is there pressure put on the uh, on the doer? Oh, there yes, is. there is. Okay. And one of the instructions I was going <laughs> to... You may be tempted to fiddle with the worm gears. Don't tighten it down anymore. No, I will not be tempted. Nor will I ever wash it in a dishwasher. I will be very careful. And oh, yeah, no microwaves. No mic... <laughs> <laughs> Might be an interesting experiment, though. Yeah. You know, this is like the TARDIS. Somebody's saying, uh, weird am I saying, the inside of the door is smaller than the inside. Actually, it's like the TARDIS. It's actually bigger on the inside. It's it's a remarkable... Uh, after after the four liters of beer, <laughs> I I would have I would have gone with that. <laughs> that you, Did you drink the whole thing? Uh, one gallon is 8.3 pounds. An imperial gallon is 10. So actually, this is an important thing for you to know. If Should you pick one up? The most common one is the 665. 665 milliliters is an imperial pint. Ah. It's vitally important as good and honest Americans that when you go to the bar and present that to the barkeep and say, I'd like an imperial pint of beer, and watch them as the auto-delete of the word imperial happens and they serve you a full oh, stein. Right. And you were honest, you said imperial pint. Right, right. And they gave you four and a half extra ounces of beer for free. Thank you. <laughs> you were honest. Can we can we buy the silvered one uh, online? Is you that can, awesome? that's, that's the shiny brass. Shiny brass. And rugged is the one you're holding. No, rugged is the one you have. That's the one I have The one that home. has the silicone sheath between yeah. the glass and the shield. Yeah, there's actually a funny story online if, about why that silicone sheath is there was unexpected. Yeah, that was a, that's not what I ordered. <laughs> and yet. Uh, prototype, uh, I'll see if it works. Sell it to Leo. <laughs> no, you didn't get the prototype. The prototype actually belongs to a man named George, who actually builds beautiful scientific structures for us. Oh, neat. If you need to build a lab rack, if you got to hang everything off it, George probably built it for you oh, if you're at neat. Lawrence Livermore or Lawrence Berkeley. We should get George. So there are, uh, you are still working on uh, the samplers. Mm -hmm. Do you, is there anything in stock or are you... Uh, oh, I, well, I have no idea what's still in stock. Nothing's in stock now, I can guarantee you. Really? Well, but, we'll uh, see. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, no. Let's put it this way. If you order now, you may or may not get it soon. Uh, you will get it before, th it will go out in the mail before the 20th. Before, okay, so you're... you're that, is, that is the promise. That is the promise. Courtesy of the inventory controls I put in because of you. Did you, did you, oh, you did, okay. The inventory yeah. controls went into place shortly thereafter with the, I'm not going to grab you like my fiance grabbed me and said, you will fix this. <laughs> this will never happen again. <laughs> so, <clears throat> the Leo Laporte Memorial Inventory Control System is now in place. <laughs> I'm glad there'll be a memorial for me someday. Uh, funraniumlabs.com. I would love to hear some stories about uh, Antarctica, but you're going to have to come back for that. <laughs> uh, there, there's actually quite a few of them on site. If you go hit it's great. the there's blog a, site, yeah. hit the Adventure and Radiation tag, there's lots of Antarctica stories I in there. I thought we'd also talk about you know that. Explain, though, we have to explain what a health physicist is to those who okay. uh, were here 17 hours ago when we began the show. <laughs> so a health physicist is the term that came was come up with during the Manhattan Project to describe the people that were watching the workers making the nuclear weapons to make sure that they stayed healthy and weren't exposed to the materials they're working with and incidentally didn't break anything. Because health physics isn't just protecting people from radiation, it's protecting the environment and property from radiation. So it's save the toys from you and you from the toys. A very important thing to do. So. And I'm glad you do it. It's my job to do radiation safety for UC Berkeley. I'm glad you do it. And I also teach at Las Positas College doing radiation safety. You could teach coffee, too. I bet you there'd be some interest. 
This is fat. And if you the, put a little. No, you, you a little Mark. Bit. Mark can truly teach coffee. Mark is great. And I hope Mark is watching because uh, we were saying his ears are burning, definitely. <laughs> um, uh, there, cold, uh, coffee, cold brew coffee is uh, uh, a little different from what you might be used to. Mm -hmm. That's why it's a good idea to try the sampler. Um, I'm an espresso guy, so I keep I like that bitter flavor. But I have to say, with the vodka, I'm wondering if you're going to like the Death Wish. I might try I've the taken, Death I'm Wish. I'm taking it away. No, from don't take. Yeah, I just because uh, I would probably try it now, and that would be bad. That would be tomorrow. Very bad. Tomorrow, try it. <laughs> it's more more awaits you at funraniumlabs.com. Straight up. Iced, hot, with or absinthe, vodka, with or absinthe. Uh, there, I'm gonna try it with absinthe. We, we've actually uh, compiled quite a few cocktail recipes as people have tinkered over the years. That mm. and my primary tasting subjects is the tasting room at the St. George Spirits Distillery. I have two dozen of some of the finest refined palates I can come across right on the other side of Alameda from me. Say here. Try coffee. They say, here, try this unlabeled bottle. <laughs> so it's a fair trade. I haven't, I haven't gone blind yet. Their hearts haven't exploded. Everyone's happy. <laughs> Straight out of the still, baby. <laughs> Such a pleasure, Philip. Actually, I have done that. I was, really? I was, well, finger whack through it. Wow. For the heart of the heart of their raspberry eau de vie. Oh. It was heavenly. That does sound really good. That mm -hmm. does sound really good. I'm in my little place now. <laughs> <laughs> Philip Broughton, thank you so much. Thank you, Leo. Really a pleasure. Good to be here. Thank you for the coffee. I am totally buzzed. <laughs> <sighs> Again, funraniumlabs.com or at funranium on Twitter. We do this show each and every Wednesday, uh, usually not with so much imbibing, but what the hell. 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Continuous improvement, Leo. It's a continuous improvement, exactly. 2100 UTC. Watch live. You never know what you might see. And if you can't, though, uh, we make on-demand audio and video available after the fact of Twit and, of course, on uh, all the podcast clients like iTunes and the Zoom store and so forth. Chipotle vodka. Oh, yes. With absinthe. It's like a Mexican hot chip. Yes, I do know Glenn Garabedian. <laughs> The chat room's asking, who's Glenn Garabedian? Uh, he was a very nice gentleman from Lawrence Livermore. Oh, who all right. was a font of knowledge. There you go. I learned so many great stories from him, which unfortunately I can't share. <laughs> <laughs> the absinthe recipe and, all, and many others are available in the How to Consume section at the Black Blood of the Earth website, funraniumlabs.com. There's some really good recipes. Scroll down. Lots of interesting ideas. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you. Next week, who do we have, Karstein? We've got some great people lined up for you. Say again? Alex Ohanian, the founder of Reddit? Yeah. Next week? Ask him anything. Join us. We'll see you on Triangulation.